Hi there, welcome to the Player YouTube channel where amongst other things we do car reviews. And I'm not talking car reviews that you're probably used to. You know when they talk about scratchy plastics and fake vents and how many plastic bottles are getting door bin, things like that. No, we're not gonna do that. What we're gonna do is give you a straight up evaluation of the car that we're testing. And hopefully at the end of the day, you can make a decision whether you wanna go down and get a test drive of that particular car. That's what it's all about. My name's AJ and the car today in question, believe it or not, is the BMW M340i. This is a proper driver's car. It's not as raw as I thought, it's very refined, I've got to say that. It's nimble, but it's well balanced at the same time. The question is, can it cut the mustard with the competition? The likes of the uh, Mercedes C43 AMG, for example, or the Audi S4, or even the Genesis G70, which we reviewed a few weeks ago, and I thought it was an absolutely brilliant car. Click up there now if you want to watch that review, because that was a pretty cool car. Really like that. So as I say, can it cut the mustard with those cars? Well, we need to find out, and the only way we're going to do that is to get this car back to Player HQ, have a look around it, get in the back for the passengers, see how much space is in the boot, talk about the engine and the gearbox configurations, and let you know what we think of this new M340i from BMW. Whichever way you look at this car, whatever angle you look at this car, it's stunning. Look at the flowing lines on it. Look at that real low sort of aggressive stance at the front there. It just dictates it's ready for business in my books anyway. Launched back in 2019, this car in USA and Canada alone is the biggest selling model in BMW's range. However, here in the UK, we're a little bit more passionate about our estate cars. In BMW language, that's the Touring, and that sells more here and Germany than anywhere else, which is quite incredible in a way. The car is X-Drive, and X-Drive, if you know BMW, means it's all-wheel drive, which makes it very, very practical and really versatile. So round at the front, you get BMW's intelligent grille. This one is in black because it's an M Sport at the end of the day and it gets a black grille. You get some lovely laser headlights around here. I love the shape of them, the way they curve around and sort of smooth everything into this beautiful aerodynamic bumper you've got here at the front. Now the bumper itself sits 10 millimeters lower. Well, the whole car sits 10 millimeters lower because this has M Sport suspension, which is 10 millimeters lower than a standard three series. So there you go, just explain that one as well. You've got these larger air vents at the front here as well. And if you look around the side here, you've got these gorgeous 19 inch alloys with some red calipers in there and some black mirror caps. They are part of the shadow line package, which will cost you an extra 750 pounds. But isn't that worth it? They're gorgeous. Another thing, look at this color, Tanzanite blue. What a beautiful colour, especially on a day like today. It's going to cost you an extra £1,100, but I think the whole car just sort of matches in and blends beautifully. Now for my favourite bit of the car review, let's get under the bonnet. The bonnet releases down here in the driver's foot. Well, it's a double pump because it's a BMW, so you pull it twice because there's no bonnet catch. You'll see what I mean in a minute. Don't forget as well, if you're driving a left-hand drive car, it's going to be in the same place, so it'll be in the passenger footwell, won't be in the driver footwell. We lift it up, a couple of decent gas struts, really nice and easy, that easy to work on. The only thing is this lovely engine is all covered up with this plastic cowling, which is such a shame because under here there is a three-litre turbo petrol 24-valve engine, straight six, absolutely stunning, developing around about 369 brake horsepower. That's actually 48 horsepower more than the previous version of this car. So it's going up slowly but surely. You get an eight speed auto sequential gearbox. You also get launch control as standard and the gearing on this car is actually lower than a standard three series. So all in all, couple all that together, use your launch control, you're gonna get a naught to 60 time of under 4.4 seconds. It's, it's a flying machine. Top speed is limited to 155 miles an hour, sadly. Well, you wouldn't want to be doing that out on the main road, but I'm sure if you got out on the track, you could unlimit that if you get my drift, because this car will just keep going and going. It's all kept on the road using 
ad adaptive damping, you've got sports brakes and sports steering as well with this car. All in all, it's just a hell of a driving machine. So, if you're ever lucky enough to get up close and personal at the back of this car, which I doubt you will be, but if you do, you've got to agree, it is stunning. I mean, the rest of the car is great, but this is just stunning. I love the boot. Um, up at the top here, you've got your DAB radio aerial, which comes down across this beautiful big screen here, all privacy glass all the way around the back as well. I love this, really great for when you're reversing up. You've got kind of a short, stubby little boot on this, but it is a bit of a wolf in sheep's clothing because inside it's a lot bigger than what it actually looks. You've got this piece of aero running all the way across here. Now, you may think that's inconsequential. It's a little bit of aesthetics. Well, trust me, it isn't. Without that on there, this car wouldn't sit down the way it sits at the back when you get up to a decent speed in it. Got these mahoosive great exhausts, one either side there. I think that really gives it that aggressive, chunky look as well. Beautiful set of LEDs either side. You've got your M340 badge there. You've got your X-Drive badge here. Now, this car benefits from the comfort pack and the comfort pack gets you, wait for it, an assisted electronic boot lift. There you go. I'll tell you more about the comfort pack in a minute when we get up front because there's loads of bits you get with it. Um, inside, 480 litres of boot space. Easily get two sets of golf clubs, a couple of decent sized suitcases and away you go for the weekend. You've got some space either side to pack bits and pieces. In this one, I've got a little first aid kit. There we go, that's just popped in there. There's no spare wheel, no uh, space saver, and there's no pump and stupid latex, you know, you know what I'm talking about. You've got run flats with this car, but that in turn gives you plenty of space in here as well. If you do need to pump a tire up or need to pump, you know, an inflatable or whatever you've got, there is a 12 volt adapter just in there as well. Inside the back there, if you need extra space, there are a couple of levers, one either side, and that will allow you to pull those seats down inside there and you don't have to go around where the passengers are. All in all, it's not only good looking, it's practical and versatile. So just before I jump in and show you what it's like for the passengers, notice how far this door goes back. It's a really lovely angle for getting a child seat in there really easily, or just simply helping people in and out if they're a little bit older, or in my case, if you want to jump in and out fairly quickly. Look at that. Um, first up, decent bit of leg room here, decent knee room. The actual seats themselves, you'll see they've been sculpted that way, which gives you that extra bit, even though that is quite a way back because I like to sit back when I'm driving. Another thing I love in this car, really love, is this all black leather uh, upholstery that you get in the car. It is an extra 990 pounds, but I think it's so worth it. And it's the quality is stunning as well. You get independent rear heating in this car and two USBs here in the middle, and you can adjust your little vents there however you want. The nice thing is you can set that into auto and it'll just do it itself. And if you do get too warm, just turn it on and off. You've got heated rear seats in this car as well. It's a little bit luxurious around the back here. Um, on the practicality of the car, you've got your ISOFIX points and they are built in as well. So you're not gonna lose those, which again is really good. Um, recessed seat belts, again, really nice for sliding across in the middle there. Now I'm gonna check it out what it's like to slide across in the middle. So you could sort of kind of sit here for a short trip if you were getting a lift back from you know, the pub from lunch or something, because that's inevitably what it's going to be like. You're going to be out in this, get your manager, you know, he's going to drive you back because you've had a couple too many lunchtime. You've got Sylvia and Cynthia in the back here from, you know, accounts and HR. And obviously the three of you are going to be quite comfortable on your way back to the office, which is nice. That's what we want. In the centre here, you do get an armrest and you get a double cup holder. I quite like that. Should we do that again? Look at that. Pops up. The only thing with that is, if you're resting your arm then, you've got a cup of coffee, you're now, that's going to be a bit awkward, isn't it? You're going to have to sort of sit like that, which looks a bit weird. Wouldn't it be nice, like the one we did the other day with the, um, I think it was the iX, the BMW iX, yes it was, and the little thing popped out there, it was really nice, came out there and then you could put your cups in there, so you still had full use of your armrest. Hmm. Maybe, you never know, they might start doing that. Um, all in all, though, it's really comfortable in here. You've got a couple of nice curtsy lights up there, LED, of course. And this car does benefit from a sunroof as well. So when it's open during the summer, it'd be quite nice and airy as well. All in all, though, yes, you could definitely sit in this car for a number of miles and feel very comfortable indeed. Let's uh, check out up front for the driver in this car. And the first thing is how well bolstered these seats are and how comfortable they are. 
Another thing with this car, you can get the perfect driving position. There's plenty of scope here when you're adjusting your steering. Look at that, there's tons of movement there. So I've got it set up exactly where I like it. I'm gonna pull the door to. So on the door, obviously you've got your windows, you've got your mirrors, you've got a couple of memory buttons here as well for your seats because these are the electronically adjusted memory seats, which are really, really nice. Um, lock and unlock button there, car automatically locks up when it drives off, you can change that however you want to set it. Um, lighting button, lighting panel, over to the right of the steering on the actual fascia there. I normally leave mine in auto, it does it all for you. However, you will need to put your fog lights front and rear on when you do need them. Cockpit, all digital, really lovely, and I love the TFT touchscreen in the middle. It's not intrusive, it's not too big. The whole thing sort of flows really nicely across there. Looking at the steering wheel itself, on the right hand side is your media control centre. Now when I mean media control, you've got volume button, you can change stations or change tracks, whatever you're listening to. Don't forget you've got the Apple Play in this car, you've got uh, wireless uh, charging in this car as well, talk about that in a minute. Uh, you've got telephone system here and you've also got your Ask BMW button, we know all about that. And in the middle is a little menu button. So you can scroll that up and down in the center there. Really nice. Left-hand side, driving aids when you're out on the road. So you've got your cruise control, you've got your distance control, your lane departure, lane keeping, all that sort of thing. Uh, you've got your mode button on there as well, and you can just simply toggle up and down when you're in your cruise control. It's ever so easy to set. Speed limiter on there as well. Fancy bit of fun. The steering wheel does come with the flappy paddles, so you just put it into your manual setting, and you've got your paddles there for changing your gears. I love the steering wheel in this car. It's really, really nice. You can literally, it's just a perfect shape as well. It just feels like a proper steering wheel. Let's have a look down the centre here. Well, in the centre, you do get a cubby with a USB-C inside there. So you can plug all your bits in that need to be hidden away. Put your phones in there, stuff like that. In the centre section here, using the iDrive, we've got a decent black knob in this car. Now, I know I always go on about knobs. I love a decent knob, you know that. And the reason I love a decent knob is because when you get in this car with wet hands or with gloves on, you don't want to be touching your screen because one, it won't work properly and two, it just makes a mess of it. So having a nice big black knob to negotiate through the menus as you do using the iDrive BMW system is just perfect for me. You do get one other knob in this car. Wait for it. Volume knob. Yes, because when you get in the car and some idiots maybe left the you know the the sound so high it blows your ears off you can turn it down straight away even with your gloves on or wet hands once again bit of piano black in this car i like that but you know hidden under here there are bits and pieces as well so the piano black is nice the way it's hidden it every, just really nice little touches a double cup holder usb-c there and a 12 volt adapter as well and as i mentioned there is a wireless charger in there for your apple phone close that back down again because I think it just looks really nice. Uh, simple buttons on the iDrive system. You've got the home button, the map, the nav system, and you sort of kind of get used to where they are. So when you're driving, you're looking straight ahead, you can just tap in and out and you know exactly what it's doing. Again, I love this system with the big knob because you can just move that left, right, up and down wherever you want it. Just looking at the screen and keeping your eyes on the road. Really, really nice. Separate heating system. Again, that's what you need in a car like this. You don't want to be flapping around up here trying to set your heating up or you're cool, you know, cooling yourself down. You want it there where it's separate so you can just scroll up and down, increase the heat, decrease the heat, whatever you want. You also get some nice heated front seats in this car. I like that. These are assigned buttons so you can set them up how you want. Just sign that you've got about seven or eight there that you can do. It's all just so easy. Let's check out under here in the cubby. You've got the glove box at the front there. Again, we need to get rid of these. We don't need owner's manuals these days. We've got the internet, we've got YouTube. If there's a problem or we need to know something, just tap it in your phone or on your laptop, whatever, you know. Don't need these, cost money and, you know, making all these bits and pieces. They take a few quid off. And it takes up a lot of room in the glove box. All in all though, it's a fantastic driver's car to sit in. Um, it really, we, you know, it's, <laughs> It's just built for that reason. Let's check out the additional packs that you can buy and then let's get it out on the road. Like most cars these days, the basic or entry level cars, we've now affectionately named them, come with a decent array of standard kit. 
However, if you want to increase the specification on your car, you're going to have to end up spending out on additional packs, as they now call them. And they come with a price tag. For example, with this car, you get the Comfort Pack Plus, which is £1,880. But for that, you will end up with two very nice electronically adjustable seats. You get a heated steering wheel as well. You get the assisted boot lift, which I mentioned earlier, and not forgetting keyless entry and keyless ignition. If you fancy more piano black than Elton John's living room, extra £416. The electronic sunroof on this car will cost you an extra £791. But there again, you get some nice fresh air. And finally, if you really want to spoil yourself, go for the Tech Pack Plus, where you will get a driving assistant, you will get a parking assistant, you will get a decent heads up display, you get a Harman Kardon surround system with BMW's famous gesture control. You know all about that. It will cost you though an extra £3,450. Thanks to the adaptive suspension that you get with the M340i, you get a number of different modes to choose from. The mode buttons are down here in the middle. They're nicely positioned because when you're driving, you can just, once you get used to where each one is, you can literally just carry on driving without even looking down and swap into the various different modes. It will tell you on the cockpit display up here as well what mode you're in, and it will also change color accordingly. So for example, in Eco Pro, it goes a nice blue color. When you get into the sport mode, it goes into a real aggressive sort of sporty red which I really really love. Um, down at the bottom here you've got adaptive that's your day-to-day -day driving mode the car will do all the setup for you. you don't need to worry about anything so whether you're on a B road whether you're out in the motorway it will know exactly how to set up the suspension the steering and all the rest of the bits and pieces which is great. Eco Pro if you push that it comes up on the screen here um, you've got standard and you've got individual now with individual you can actually set it up how you like so if you want to stay in the eco mode so you're saving the fuel but at the same time you want a slightly more sporty steering you can do that by going into the configure mode we then jump into the comfort mode now comfort mode there is only one setting because comfort is comfort at the end of the day and then above that you've got the sport mode now if you press the sport mode for the second time you go from standard into plus which gives you a little bit more oomph for your, for your bang so to speak and then you can go into individual and actually configure the sport mode and how everything how you love to drive this car when you're really enjoying it out on the road. Don't forget we've got the X drive gives us the all wheel drive so you're going to be pretty safe in almost any conditions any weather conditions that can be thrown at this car and on that note really what we need to do is get it out on the road and see what those are like and how this car handles so let's go do it. Right, so first up, before we do anything, I'm going to say how quiet and refined this car is. That's about as far as I'm going to go with that, because now I'm going to put it into manual mode and I'm going to put it into sport mode, because you've got your mode buttons down here, as I told you earlier. Then we can have some fun with little said car. <laughs> I sound like a mad, crazy person who's just loving driving this absolutely mental car. And here we go. Oh, yes. <laughs> the back's going out a bit. And oh, what a. Here we go. <laughs> and down again, whoa, there we go again. Camera's going all over the place. I am literally hanging on to this car. What a fantastic drive. Look at this. <laughs> right, enough fun had by all. Brake, brake, brake. Let's get that back into manual. Let's get that down into Eco Pro. Let's save some juice for the rest of the review. Otherwise, we're going to run out of petrol. Wow, wow, what a car. So that just proves beyond all doubt that this car is it's, it was, it's as good as an M3, I'm telling you. I've, I have not experienced a car as good as that in a long, long time. Seriously, that's so much fun. And on the other hand, now I'm in the Eco Pro or even in the Comfort, it just behaves so lovely and sedately, like just a really nice family saloon car. And yet underneath, it's like a wolf in sheep's clothing. It's absolutely mad. But the surety, the grip, the braking, 
everything. And I know above all, I've got all these safety aids working for me as well. So even if I was to turn the traction control off, stupid, um, on the road anyway, but not out on the track. Obviously, you would turn it off on the track, but out on the road, yeah, a little bit silly. But even, you know, even if I was to do that, I'm telling you, this car is so sure-footed. I don't think you'd, you'd have any problem at all just doing what I just did on any road anywhere in the world. Um, let's get back to safety aids. Let's start talking a little bit more seriously about the car, but you've seen how it goes. You've seen the fun you can have with this car. And trust me, I have had so much fun in this car. It really is. Um, blind spot mirrors. Distance, lane keepy, uh, departure lane, all that's all built in. You know, you know what I'm talking about. Cruise control, um, it's all there. Tonos braking in town, front and rear, in case you know you can't see something from behind. It's got great cameras on it as well, and it does have an assist park on it, which is superb because there are quite a few blind spots on this car. I've noticed that it's got quite a lot at the back there. You know, when especially on the the, the hind quarters, if you were referring to it as a fine young filly. Um, you do need that, but it's great camera at the end of the day. That's what it's all about. Um, you've got that uh, collision impending, you know, warning system as well. It's not oversensitive in this car, but look at the way it handles these B roads, the way it just sort of just rides in, in and out of the bumps and the curves and everything. Just gives a really smooth drive. And then, yeah, should we have a bit more fun? We've got to have a bit more fun. Look, manual down into sport mode. Let's do it into the manual. Here we go. Ready? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, down the brakes, down the brakes, dead brakes, dead brakes, dead brakes. Oh, listen to that engine. Oh, right, last go, that's it, done. Let's get back. Let's do it. Let's back into Eco Pro, back into normal. I've got to say. <laughs> I'm building up a sweat here. I'm going to have to put the air cotton on. It's the middle of the winter. <laughs> um, I think you get the gist of it, guys. So you've got tons of safety aids on it. The comfort goes, it goes without saying. It is superbly comfortable. Um, and then driving it in a situation like here where we're in a small village, there's a few cars, you know, you just sort of take your time and, and it's just like a really nice, normal car. It's not, but it is that wolf in sheep's clothing. Um, Let's talk price-wise and warranties and stuff like that, because I think that's really important. Um, obviously, if you're going to buy one of these, <laughs> from £49,000, and I've got to say, from the fun I'm having, it's worth every penny. <laughs> Let's just go buy one. <laughs> from forty nine grand. But by the time you add all those packs in, you're not going to have much change out of 60 k Trust me. Um, you're going to want the packs, because you're going to want the leather. You're going to want all those nice little extra bits and pieces. And so basically look at £60,000 for one of these. Um, but it's so worth it. Anyway, uh, warranty wise, you've got unlimited three year uh, retailer warranty. Um, you've got 24 hour road assist uh, during that period with BMW road assist. Um, you're pretty much covered. Uh, I can't see this much. I'd like to see the warranty a bit longer, wouldn't we all? We'd all like a, a 10 year warranty. But at the end of the day, you know, what's possible is possible and what isn't, isn't. Overall, Let's sum this car up. Let's head back to Player HQ. Let me calm down a little bit and give you a good summing up of the BMW M340i. I'm going to do it again because I'm just absolutely... <laughs> Let's go. Oh! <laughs> So there you have it guys, that was the BMW M340i and I've got to say if you're looking for a family car with super saloon performance you're not going to go far wrong having a test drive in one of these. If you're young, free, single and got a healthy bank balance you might be tipped over into having a test drive in the M3. The choice is yours at the end of the day. You've been watching me, AJ, on the Player YouTube channel. I hope you've enjoyed the video that you've just watched as much as we've enjoyed making it because it was a hell of a car to have a play with for a couple of weeks. Um, don't forget, like, subscribe and comment. There's a comment box down below. If you want to leave any questions in there or if you've got anything useful to add to the review, then just pop it in there or one of our team will get back to you as soon as possible. 
If you're going to subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. Don't forget, leave the bell sign unchecked because at the end of the day, we do quite a few videos. We don't just do one-offs. We are part of the player. I'll get onto that in just a second. If you could do me a favor in between that, give me a thumbs up because we don't get a bonus. We don't get any extra pay, but what we do get is a pat on the back from the boss and the sponsors to say, job well done, because if you thumbs up, it means you liked what you've just watched. So I'd really appreciate that. So as I said, we are part of the player and the player is a much bigger organization. We are a 220 page male or men's bookazine. There you go, it's a whole lifestyle, the male lifestyle. We've got boats, we've got cars, we've got motorcycles, jet skis. There's reviews in there on hotels, there's golf. There are, oh, I could just keep going on and on. But you can have a copy of that for free. You can't have the physical copy, but what you can have is the online version. And all you've got to do to get that is go to www.theplayer.co.uk and very simply, it's coming up down there somewhere, just to remind you, just simply go over to there and go up to the top of the screen, you'll see it says register. That's all you've got to do. There's no data capture, you just register your name and your email, and then you can either download it and view it at your leisure, or you can look at it online by turning the pages, scrolling across, going backwards and forwards. It's so easy. The guys who put it together have done a brilliant job. Thanks for watching, guys. I'm gonna catch you next week, hopefully, with something different.